<clears throat> that's the Hollywood principle. Seeing what's next uh, from Rocket League. These, seeing what's next is actually a great choice for track because Vanatu, they were probably the first speaker I... Vanatu was the first company that ever contacted me back before I was even doing video reviews when I was just some asshole on Reddit. And I don't know who said, oh, you gotta have this guy to look at him. But they sent me a set six years ago? Six years ago. And it was the Vanatu T1s. And they had some limitations, but they were probably the best thing I'd ever heard at the time. So fast forward six years, and they bring out the exact same speaker and call it the Encore. So I heard this speaker at Rocky Mountain and I'm probably going to try to bring this speaker back to Rocky Mountain for the uh, Zeos Hi-Fi Guys room because there's been some marked improvements made to it and I think it earns the right to remain in existence because, you know, I have the power to smite things out like that. Just like... Mm, 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 mm. Now, what's the difference between the T1 and the T1 Encore? Uh, they changed the tweeter entirely. They've reworked the DSP, they've added Bluetooth, and I think they changed the way the subwoofer cutout works. And on top of all of this, the speakers now have 120 watts a piece. So the entire amplification is in this speaker, and you get an umbilical, which is, I was going to say insanely long, but it's not. You see, I think the um, Swan, because I'm going to I'm gonna have to bring up, if you stay with this video, I'll bring up the Edifier S3000 Pros and the Swan M300s and maybe even the M200s because they're going to need to be discussed because these are right around the same price range. If you click the link, go to Amazon, you see what they are, plus shipping, and it's like, oh, then I could I can get Edifiers, big six and a half, I get the high vise Swans, those are six and a half. So they're competing at the same price range as six and a half inch powered monitors that are amazing. So they better do something that's worthwhile. Now, I've left the guest star of the Genelec, I forget the model number, 37,000 million billion? Anyway, it's a $4,000 subwoofer. That's, that's coming up, that's not the review of this. But I am going to introduce it because one of the main components, and hold on, I will just move this there. One of the main things that this has over either the Edifier or the Hi-Vi is the ability to have a subwoofer out. Did the original have a subwoofer out? I know the Vanatu T0s have a subwoofer out. Those are the little guys. A lot of the T0s features, quirky features, quirks and features, hi Doug, call me, um, are put into this. Now, I'm just going to go through basically what's back here, and then I'm going to tell you if any other speakers have this. All right, we'll start with right. volume treble bass. That's pretty easy. Main power switch. Here's the connector, the wire to the other speaker. Now, the Swan still had a wire to the other speaker, but it was super low, short. It was like I had the speaker on top of there and a speaker on top of there, and it was basically stretched in front of my television. Not exactly ideal. This umbilical is going from that speaker down perfectly behind there, then under the fireplace in here. Then there's like a spool of it, what's remaining on the side. And you get like an extra two feet, and that's perfect. That's a perfect amount of length to hide the wire where you need to go. So that's pretty good. Now it's a four pole umbilical and you can order an extension for it, I believe on their site. Uh, the power cable is attached here. Now that's something that neither one of those speakers has a problem with. In fact, it's sort of like the biggest blemish on the entire Vanatu fascia is that it has an attached power cord. And they had to do it because there's literally no place to put a detachable cord. Probably saves them a little bit and I don't know. It's, it's the one thing I'm like, oh God, make this detachable. Because every time you take the speaker apart, you have to go and wrap up the wire and it sort of hangs off the back like a tail. Coaxial digital in, fiber optic in, USB in. Pretty standard. It has an analog input, it's only a three and a half millimeter, again, to save space. Subwoofer out. Nothing else has subwoofer out of the speakers I've done recently. Some of them try to do it, and a lot of times when you 
plug in a subwoofer out, say to an amplifier like an 8018 or what was a couple of the other ones that have subwoofer outs. They just simply take the signal and just mono it and throw it down. They don't do anything to the speakers themselves. This subwoofer out, when you plug a subwoofer into it, it detects that. The speakers actually will cut off the frequencies. I believe it's, it's, it's been pushed down to 80 hertz and below now. Instead, it used to be at 120 when you plugged it in, and that made the speakers sound really thin, but allowed them to play louder. This only cuts off from 80 hertz and below and still allows them to play louder. We're gonna plug it in while they're playing, and you're gonna hear the speakers physically turn up a notch, and then this thing will turn on with it. Uh, we've got a pairing program button, which we're gonna have to talk about for a second, because if you do know anything about the Vanatu T-Zeros, you know that they've got that crazy, like, um, Tomb Raider, Lara Croft level of like, set this valve this way and this valve this way and then go run down and punch an alligator and then fucking something happens. Um, here's something that, if I could take this and put it on a plaque and put that plaque like, like in the Hall of Fame for, I don't know, the, is there a speaker Hall of Fame? Maybe that's what I'll do with, with any extra money from the GoFundMe for Rocky Mountain will be. Um, a speaker hall of fame. There is a button that lets you choose whether you want this powered monitor to be the left side or the right side. Now, um, I cannot tell you how important that is. Hey, Edifier. Hey, Swan. Why you no do this? Because here's the thing. If it's just an analog input, if you've got RCAs, you could literally just reverse the RCAs. And you plug the white into the red and the red into the white and you've reversed them. So that, what the benefit of that is, is see the speaker just sort of floating here with one wire? And this speaker has everything attached to it and the power. It just how happens that this side of my room, that side has no plug. This side's got a plug back there. So plugging things in on the right side is beneficial to me. So I simply put this speaker as, boom, it's the right side speaker. If the plug was over there, if you're in a living room and you're setting these up in a living room and your plug is on this side of the television, you'd put that speaker here, you flip the switch, say this is the left channel now. On an analog only input, it doesn't matter, you just switch it however you want. But fiber optic, Bluetooth, those things are fixed in whatever position the speakers believe they are. So, uh, God bless America and that innovation. Just please someone else put that on their stuff. You got a service port here and that's basically it. now. I'm gonna jump right to how they sound because that's probably why some of you were here. I don't know. I thought most of you were here to hear me crack wise and point at anime figurines. They didn't sound very good when I first hooked them up. I heard them at Rocky Mountain. I sat in a room, these were set up. You had a little sub over there. I forget what brand it was. Eclipse? I don't know. I'll find out what it was. I'll link a sub in the description because it won't be that. And I was like, eh, these, these things aren't, these aren't getting to me. Why aren't they getting to me like they did in, in, in Colorado? And then I figured out what it was. Let me get through. These speakers come with safety features on. If I can get to my keyboard, if you watch my Vanity T0, which I'm assuming none of you have, but I'll explain to you like I explained to them, these speakers come, where's the owner's manual? There's the owner's manual, with a series, a very large series of settings you can change via secret codes in the back. Sleep mode after 20 minutes, or don't sleep mode. These are the default settings or the X's and what you can change them to. So if you want to change how the sleep mode behaves, there's a key on the, on the remote, which we'll talk about in a second, that allows you to enable the bass and treble adjustments, but you have to hit a button beforehand. Do you not want to hit a button beforehand? Um, do you want it to be stereo or mono? There's an option for that. To permanently affix these for mono. I don't know why that would be a thing, but that's an option. You could set it to auto switch modes or fixed modes. So you have to get the remote and change the input instead of having it auto jump. Um, Bluetooth could be completely disabled. Bluetooth can broadcast all the time or broadcast online for two minutes. Sleep mode could be disabled because these things do sleep after 20 minutes. And that can be annoying if you're using, like here I'm on my living room computer. 
you're on a computer and you're using a fiber optic input or a USB input, and you're playing a game and you stop, and then 28 minutes later, you open a YouTube video, it takes a split second for the speaker to wake back up and start playing audio. If that annoys you, you could literally disable sleep mode. But the two things that I had to change to make these speakers go from, oh God, these don't even compete with the Hi-Fi or the Edifier, to, oh God, where am I keeping these? Where am I putting them? Where can I listen to them constantly? Are enables shelved DSP setting mode, which is default, to switch that to flat DSP. So what the DSP, what the shelved DSP mode is doing is it's preventing the speaker from playing low end and certain frequencies that it probably isn't comfortable with at high volume. But there's also, to compensate for that, there are compressors enabled. Now, if you enable compression, that's when it takes the very, very lows and brings them up and takes the very, very highs and brings them down. Sort of squeezes it to a nice, thick bar. Now, you don't want compression on your stuff. This, that's a rule. But they bring it to your house on because they're assuming if you're if there's 100% of people buying these, 80% of them aren't going to have a clue what the hell they're doing and they're just going to turn it up real loud. And the last thing you want is a speaker you just spent $600 on to make farty noises. But you and I, the people watching this review, we know better. Well, we should know better. I'm going to teach you better. You should know better. And I'm going to teach you what's like. You have to take those things. You take those both those things, the shell DSP, and you got to take the compressors and you got to disable them. The process to do so is as follows. If you're watching this and you own a set of these, you're going, let me see. I'll just talk about one. The, the compressor is min max min right. Okay, so here's how this works. Minimize this. There we go. You... Fine. The Lara Croft two meter way to change settings. Min max min right. You shut off the speaker. Follow me. Min max min. I literally code it in. It could be minimum, middle, or maximum. Those are the three M's. That's terrible at three M's, by the way. So you, you code in which setting you want to change via these three knobs, minimum setting, maximum setting, minimum setting, or minimum setting, whatever, depending on what you want, with the power switch off. You hold the pair program button, or you also switch the left and right. It's basically your on off switch. You set it, this is the setting we want. We want it to be right, which means enable or disable. So we want right. You hold the pair program button. You turn this on while holding the pair program button. The blue LED, comes on, which by the way, we could dim that. You let go, it flashes. It says, that means you've set the new thing. You're good to go. If you hold the pair program button while it's on, five seconds, then you turn the volume knob. You could adjust how bright the blue LED is to the point of being off if you wanted to. This is why I'm going to get a Vanatu shirt and wear it. That right fucking there. How low can I make it go? Like that low? Perfect. You could literally dim the power LED. Just the fact that that exists. <laughs> Golf claps. You're also going to notice that even though I have these speaker stands set up and I've got, you know, they've got a nice foam block on top. I didn't put any of, this, of the feet on this. I'm using, these are pieces of a uh, yoga mat. I use them to put my speakers out on everything because it's nice and thick. And I'll link to Yoga Mat in the description. Because you just buy a giant sheet of this, cut it up, and for $22 or something, you've got basically a perfect, soft, pliable material. And the reason it's under this speaker, specifically the left speaker, the right speaker actually was holding up on its own, is because the low end that these speakers throw, thanks to taking off those, thanks to taking off the limitations, um, we'll actually rotate that speaker. Let's see if I can find something that actually it does it. No, door negative. Oh, here we go. Hold on, hold on. I know what I'll do with the parachute ending. I may have to edit this out of the video because I can't play the song long enough. Where is it? Where is it? There it is. Ah, 
Ah, dying. Shit, that's why I'm, I'm like, why do these sound terrible all of a sudden? Yeah, because I have volume and bass and treble. You're supposed to put those back to where you want them after you program it. Please remember, or you're going to have like sh The bass and treble adjustments on these, I'm going to say are sharper and they go farther than either one of the edifiers or the swans. Uh, usually, since I'm using them in my living room, if I'm sitting way the hell back here, I'll turn the treble up a bit because you want a little bit more, it needs to travel further. So you put a little bit more treble up. And if the bass isn't working out where it's sitting, you either raise it up or if it sounds too muddled, you lower it down. And if I put the treble all the way up and sit back here, I still die. Be very gentle and ginger with those adjustments. All the way in one way or the other is going to be a lot. So I'm gonna leave them flat for now. I'm, Let's talk about the remote, because I'm about to get into digital volumes. Here is said remote. We have got auto, which is to pick the input automatically, analog, USB, Bluetooth, optical coaxial. Here's mute, and here's volume. Those are the basic controls. Then down here, you have a uh, grid of nine buttons. Upper left saying enable. Now, all these other buttons don't function unless you first hit enable. That's so... It knows specifically that you are saying, I want you to raise the bass. Now, there are knobs in the back, physical knobs, not digital ones that go click, click, click. So if you raise the bass up a lot, and then you go back here and you just touch this, if it detects that's moved, whether that's volume or, like if you adjust the volume, here, hold on. Let's lower this back here. Actually, no, no, no. Let's raise this back here high. Let's raise it up high. I keep looking for remotes. They're in every pocket. I need more remotes. Now I'm going to lower it. All right, I'm lowering it. I'm lower. I've lowered it down now. If you lower it with the remote, but that knob is that knob didn't move. The knob is still here. If you go back and you touch it. It will jump back to whatever the knob is doing. The knob takes priority. So just know, if you're going to have these in your house, you're going to do not just max the volume and then try to adjust it. Because if something goes wrong, something vibrates, a kid goes back there and touches it, it's at that volume. So I would probably go like... Go halfway and then adjust. Pause music again. Put this back to halfway. All right, things this remote control doesn't have. Now this has a lot of buttons on it. This has 18 buttons on it. What it does not have is the ability to change tracks, play or pause your Bluetooth device. The Edifier does have that. The Edifier also proudly states Bluetooth 5. And these don't say what Bluetooth they're using. I'm gonna assume it's four. If I'm wrong, I'll find out. I'll put it in the comments or I'll put in a comment or in the description. But since they're not screaming it from the hills, I always assume that that's not a feature. These were developed, these are developed in-house in a very small place with run by two guys. They only have two speaker models ever. And this is like the third revision of the first one that's six years ago. If it doesn't have the most cutting edge of Bluetooth tech, it's probably because they started developing this board three years ago. Right? Edifier can just hit a button and 80 people in a room start churning out designs. But the lack of the ability to change to next track or last track while my phone is connected is annoying. Now I'm using it off a computer, so I have my other regular remote that, you know, the FLIRC is controlled by and I can hit next track. Now, keep in mind, we've taken off both the shelf DSP and the compressors. That's putting the life of these speakers in your hands. Your hands, my hands, my very, very capable trained hands. I've broken shit, don't worry about it. But the point is, once you enabled, disabled really those two things, it's up to you to listen. Am I pushing the speaker too hard? One of the biggest problems I had on the original Vanity T1s was this. They didn't get loud enough. On a desk right here, they're perfect. These are perfect. Still do that shelved thing. Still do the compressor thing on a desk. Put them here. They compete or beat the 
my favorite Adam T5Vs. They are just like the clarity that comes out of that new tweeter is just, oh shit. And the fucking centering and imaging. Sorry to like mix in like, hey, is he talking about how they sound now? He's talking about a lot of features. I would say we're getting to it, but you never know with me. If I think something's worth talking about, in my head, everyone knows how good Vanitus are. They're like, it's an unspoken word. It's just like, oh, Vanitu, oh, they sound amazing. Everyone just nods. Yeah, of course they sound amazing. So I forget to tell you guys that, oh, by the way, these sound amazing. Where was I? Wow, I don't get lost usually. Okay, I sit on the desk, sit standing here, the remote, control this. Next track doesn't have the buttons. Wow, I'm, I, I blanked a bit. Bass, treble, low end, imaging. Low end is astonishing. They cost the same as the six and a half inch models like those. And they're only a five and a quarter. But like you can see on the back, passive radiator. Now passive radiators have a special place in my heart because um, they don't chuff. I was talking about the ex how bad, how loud it got. I remembered now. They don't chuff. The high vise, the swans, chuff. You could hear the air getting, <laughs> hear the <this> sound? <laughs> That's me opening my mouth and just breathing in and out really fast. That's what a port does. This subwoofer here has a port, two holes that literally, if you flare them right or you put those dimples on them like B&W does, you could sort of call that down. This giant Genelec sub, it's only a 12 inch and the port is literally like the size of a goddamn Xbox or bigger, like an original Xbox. So it doesn't chuff. But when you do this, when you seal the box entirely and then go about balancing it, because the way these work is you have to weight the inside of that. So instead of air getting shot out of a hole, this compresses, that reacts. And if that weighs the right amount and has the right stiffness, it reacts in sync. And then you get the crazy base. That's why the Bucart uh, S400s, those are a $2,000 set of speakers and they use this technology. Not many speakers do. Not many things at all use passive radiators. Actually, I'm, that's a lie. I'll take that back. A lot of very cheap Bluetooth speakers use passive radiators. They're not tuned very well and they're using, you know, whatever's lying around, but they actually use it because it's a way to get small things to make low end. And these small things, I just can't win today with the shuffle. The shuffle is just. Usually my shuffle is like on point. That's, let's do it a thing. This is epic score, Echoes of War. Yeah, that's moving, that's moving, and then my amp is moving, literally just vibrating from the low end. That's being caused by these. I heard shit in my dining room, on my table, my glass table, my Megumin shrine, even though Wiz and Darkness are probably better girls, but everyone loves Megumin, so I can't argue with that. All these glass bottles were just... my ceiling is rattling. These are a five and a quarter, but you put a hundred watts behind that driver and a hundred watts behind that driver, which means you can move them not just hard, but fast and accurately. And then you DSP correct them. So they work properly through the manipulation of the signal. And then you tune a back port and everything works out. These compete with those. These are, I, I packed those away today or else I would have one here to show you. Those are huge in comparison to these. No one will complain about these in your living room or your office or on your desk. They're perfectly sized. You want to see what they want to see how plain you can make them look? This is a sin. This is an absolute sin I'm about to commit. Oh God, they're just they're just boring black boxes. I would leave those in the garbage. Like, look at that, like, ah, oh, oh my God. No, stop. They're not even sheen. Like some of the new 
like covers are like sheen so you could just see like the drivers and these have bright silver drivers so you'd be able to see them. they're just oh oh stop please make it stop useless fucking covers um the front led is amber it sits in the power one these are hard to beat if you need all the inputs we got two digital inputs Actually, three if you count Bluetooth as a digital input. You get a three and a half millimeter input, so you can run straight analog to it. You could run this. With, you could run this off of a freaking old iPod if you want to just plug it in. It's got so many nice little features. The ability to switch left and right. That automatically, I would add a hundred dollars to a freaking speaker if it could do that. Because I literally had to buy a longer fiber optic cable because I'm running these off of fiber optic from my computer. These are running on their own. I would say their own DAC. But if the technology hasn't changed for the amplification, these are one of those speakers that doesn't actually convert to analog. Follow me on this for a second. They have an analog input, but that gets converted to digital. And then the amplification is running off a very, very, very high frequency digital signal. So in other words, the DAC, the digital to analog converter, is accomplished by the physical movement of the speaker. In other words, you're not supposed to run a square wave to a speaker, right? Because it's, 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 waveforms are supposed to be nice and smooth like this, right? You follow me? You're looking at me, me doing this with my finger? That's great. A wave, a square wave is literally on, off, on, off. The problem with trying to run a square wave to a speaker is, the speaker can't react fast enough because it's physical. It exists in real life. It's not some video game shit. So if you tell speaker all the way out, it still takes that time to move out. And you say all the way in, it still takes that time to move in. The thing is, if you tell it where to move fast enough, you can say, move here, now move here, now move here, now move here. That speaker will follow a waveform based on its physicality alone. So instead of relying on a DAC to then produce an analog signal, then produce an analog amplification to move an already out, they're just, I hope I'm getting this right, because if I'm explaining this wrong, I'm gonna look like a dick. But if you sent digital signals, digital power signals to a physical thing like a tweeter or a woofer, the, if you sent them fast enough, and I'm talking about very fast, it's not gonna sound terrible, because it's gonna be moving that driver it's gonna be like, move here now, and now move here, and now move here, all right, now move backwards. And then it's gonna, it's going to follow that with the physical, actual, in other words, the DAC of this speaker is the speaker itself. So everything internal is, is digital and stays that way. It's an amazing piece of tech. It's an amazing piece of tech and they pull it off. Now, am I playing this more? Hearing, I'm hearing some noises that I don't like, so I'm going to lower it because I have it up because I'm in review mode. Like I said, you take those compressors, you turn them off, you take that DSP shelving, you turn it off. You're in charge. You break these, you buy them. Or you, you actually you break them, you have three months if you buy them from their website. Actually, you know, one month in-home warrant, uh, trial warranty, three-year three -year warranty, 30-day in-home trials. Buy them from Amazon, you obviously get the Amazon three-month guarantee. Nice. There we go. The bass is what makes the booty move. Feel the bass. Move back. I like the bass, but I digress. I do like the bass, but I digress. It's time to plug in the subwoofer. Now, I'm going to play this track. And I'm going to literally jam the RCA into the back of the unit. And when I do that, two things are going to happen. A, the sub's going to kick on. And B, these are going to stop playing low end and get louder. So let's listen to that happen now. It's much louder in here. It's insanely louder in here. Yeah, it did the thing where it started. I didn't twist it. You didn't watch me twist it. It's, it's going to fall off. My concern with these speakers, 
and this is a great concern to have, is that if you don't tie them down, they're going to fall. Because, and the reason why this one moves and not that one, besides the fact that I took this out and I did it on that one, is this one doesn't have the amplification in it, so it's a little bit lighter. I think it's one pound lighter than that one. And that one's got a bunch of wires sort of holding it in place. So I highly recommend getting a speaker pad or blue tack, or if you have like a soft foam that it's going on, apply the feet so it could press down. Because that speaker will just rotate like a compass. Every bass beat, I've watched it do this. It's like shit. They need to put big spikes on the bottom of these speakers to keep them from doing that. So yeah, now that I've got a subwoofer, and it doesn't have to be this Genelec. It doesn't have to be this Genelec subwoofer, but it's the subwoofer I have free, so I'm gonna hook it up to this. The last time I reviewed Vanitus, I said, don't hook up a sub, that ruins the whole flavor of the low end, right? On a desk, I'm gonna stick with that notion. If you're gonna use these on a desk, and you're gonna get that low end out of them, and they're small, and they're pretty, and you put them on little angled stands, and they're perfect. But, you move into a living room, yes, they will absolutely, positively, 100% work without a sub until you plug in a sub, and then you go, holy shit. The volume change, because here's what distorts. Making volume is about moving those drivers more, all right? So here's bass playing at a normal volume, and you start moving it, and as it's moving this far in and out, you're risking hitting the, the end of it, how far it can go. When you plug in the subwoofer, it doesn't need to move that far anymore, because it's not doing that sort of low end. It could just keep going like this just harder and harder. So those frequencies can get louder without breaking anything. That takes over. And that's why if you're in a room, if you're gonna move them into the living room, try them without a sub. Just buy the set straight up, don't even just do it. And then if the need should arise, if you're like, you know what? I, I took the shelf DSP off and I could feel that I'm getting close to the edge or I might hurt something. Um, literally any subwoofer will work. A mic at 12 inch is like 170 bucks. You can get a Bic F12, you can get a Dayton sub. There's a couple of the cheapo subs. Ah, that's the sub they were using, a fucking Polk. I hate Polk subs. I was like, why did you put this in the room? And he's like, don't worry, the other room has a different sub. And the other room had like a Martin Logan, which was like, oh, sweet. But you know what, I guarantee you, no one at Vanatu, none of them have ever heard, it's a $4,000 Genelec sub hooked up to the Vanatus. And I have. Oof. This is happening right now. Just pointing out that this is happening right now and I'm enjoying the fuck out of it. Because once you add a sub, it, again, I'm happy that it's this sub, but it doesn't have to be. Once you plug the sub into these in this room, in this size room with this sort of like commitment to space, that's unlock number three. It's remove the shelf DSP, remove the compressors, plug in a sub. You could literally, if you wanted to test this theory out, you don't even have to plug it into the sub. It just has to detect a wire is plugged into it. So now if I unpause this track, they're still louder than they would have been if I unplug it. If I, if I unpause this. Did you hear what just happened? Here, 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 hold on. Plugging in an RCA, sells a speaker, there's a sub, stop playing bass, get louder. You unplug this thing, and that speaker goes, oh shit, there's no sub. I quiet it down, back it up, turn our subwoofers back on. Make this, make the bass go. These can almost do better than a cheap sub. They can, in fact, I'm gonna say it out loud. 
These speakers on their own can do better than a cheap subwoofer can. But the word cheap is relative. And if you have, what did Ferris Bueller say? What did he say about the Ferrari? If you have the opportunity, why not? Something, I forget, damn it. Quote Ferris Bueller in the description. I'm a cigarette. Oh, God. These become some of my favorite speakers I've ever heard. Once you put a sub on it. If I bring them to Rocky Mountain, because again, I'm a reminder. I'm going to Rocky Mountain. As of the taping of this, actually we're up to 1,300 out of 25,000, which I'm hoping to get by September. Um, 1,350. I would set up a set of these in the room. They'd obviously be swapped out with different speakers, but I'm gonna plug a subwoofer into them. I'm gonna tweak. I don't even have the treble up. I'm over there enjoying it. I'm gonna put the treble up a little bit. And the bass knob, by the way, controls all the bass, including what that's doing. So, you um, you could be a dick. I'm the artist that goes far as the heart as a rock. You will fuck around and make me knock your fruit juice loose. Banana, you bought a melon and common brand too. Kind of tofu, that's split bamboo. I don't want to play too much more of this, but yeah, that's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Some, some David Chesky piano solos? Yes, please. Yes, ma'am. In fact, see if it has the volume control on it. I really wanted to um, preview what this is going to be like. Oh, shit. That's the Redline OST Sand Biker. I better lower this. I feel like that requires me to lower the shit a bit and lower that and, and like... Oh, my God. I don't want to break anything, but that's that, that's just like, hey, what do subwoofers do? Oh, okay. All right, I've talked about these long enough. You want to buy these for a couple reasons. Here's why. They're smaller. I don't know if I'd call them prettier. If plain is what you're after, I mean, you can put the cover on it and just make it a black box. If that's what you want, you can. They, I don't know if they offer the, the wood finish. Like, I've reviewed them in the past with the wood finish. I didn't really scour their website. But if simplicity is what you're after, I mean, these are pretty much... You could tell these are made by enthusiasts, and they've been working on them a long time, but they haven't, like... They haven't gone out of their way to design them, to have wood accents and hide all the screws. It's just like, this is an engineering showpiece. Boom. Look how much we could do with so little space. And that's why you want these, that's number one. Put them in your living room, put them behind your TV, sides, speaker stands like this. They don't have to be in the middle of the room. If you've got a wall-mounted TV, you take this, you bring it, probably, you wanna keep it a little bit away from the wall. And when you bring it there, you might have to lower the bass because it's gonna shoot bass backwards. On a desk, I think this is pretty much as good as you get, unless you're going for insane actual studio monitors for doing studio mixing where you want dead flat, and then you're looking for Atom A5Xs, you're looking for $1,000 plus shit. LS50s, I'd still take LS50s on a desk over this. They're $1,000 in passive. You want the powered LS50s, they're $2,000. So, at 600, bargain. The other time you want this is in a room like this, or where you know you're gonna get a subwoofer. Because that's the thing, the Edifier and the Swans, I tell you in both those reviews, you basically don't need a subwoofer. You basically don't need a subwoofer. You basically don't need a subwoofer. If you're gonna add one, it's kind of a pain in the ass because you're running an optical cable to it. There's no line out. There's no way to control any of that. And you gotta go get a mini DSP HD and you gotta run into that and you gotta use a splitter to, to split what you do. And that would be insanely nice by the way. But this has a subwoofer out. And if you're a base head and those don't do it for you, you have no options. But if, you get, if you're a bass head, you buy these, and these don't do it for you, oh, well, you just plug in a fucking giant subwoofer, and you're done. Then you're, you can have as much fun as you can handle because they have a subwoofer out. And that reason alone is why they're on the list and competing directly with those. Smaller? 
cleaner, I'm gonna say cleaner looking. Subwoofer out, ability to pair left and right. I, I, I wasn't gonna give him enough, I wasn't gonna give him the time of day until I turned those two DS, the DSP shelf and the other thing off. I've probably been talking for like, what, 40 minutes? It's an hour, an hour and a half, I don't know. I don't understand time anymore. This is Z review, you gotta get used to like the 40 minute rants of me standing and walking around my hands like this. I'm gonna be exhausted in Rocky Mountain. I'm gonna be like this all day. These are amazing and you should consider them. Just don't put the covers on them or it's sacrilege. That wallpaper, available in the description, like every wallpaper is available in every description of every video. Links to these. I may link to their homepage as well, because sometimes they have uh, specials and sales there. If not, grab on Amazon, that's fine. Um, what else do I link besides these? Her? What do you? What, do you want what, what else is there to link? Usually, usually I'll link the competi the competition, the high vis and the edifiers. I'll link those in the description of this video. But this is a video about these, and these do certain things that those simply can't. Now the wireless between the two, I'd kind of like to see that happen, but I think we're a couple years off. And another thing, I'm waiting for a bigger version. I would love to see a thousand dollar pair, like a six and a half with the same technology. Ugh, my heart. But right now, they're going for the small, kind, gentle looking speaker. These look like a speaker that you'd be like, oh, you got lovely speakers there, Jeremy. I enjoy, I hope you enjoy music on them. That sounds perfect. There's, Oh God, all right, I'm done with this review. Thank you for stopping by. Please check out the Patreon if you wanna see these reviews a week or more early. As soon as I'm done with these reviews, download them off my camera, encode them, and put them up on YouTube and get the things, they're on the Patreon, because I wanna get as many days as, I've dumped four or five videos at a time sometimes, and then I stretch them out for daily releases. You get to see them there first, so if there's no more in stock when these go live, the patrons all bought them. Hi, patrons. Patrons also get to ask me questions. Now, if you ask me on Patreon, on the Patreon messaging system, that takes sometimes weeks for me to get back to you because I'm behind like 74 questions. Um, if you want to skip that and actually ask me something directly, I do have a public Telegram chat that I will interact with. Although there's 700 people in there, so ha-ha, <laughs> bang. The private Telegram chat is at the $10 tier. Not to sound like, like it's pompous, but it's pompous in there. We got a lot of people with a lot of headphones, a lot of knowledge, and a little extra income, and they want to talk to me directly, and they, they get to know how these sound tonight. I pick up my phone, I take a picture of what I'm doing, and I'll tell them what they want to know. How are those speakers, by the way? I'm thinking about buying them. They know before the video's out of my camera if these are any good. They know when they arrive. Those people have the very, very inside knowledge. Um, other than seeing the videos early in that is the yard sale. Now, if these were a pair of speakers that I bought, just straight up with the Patreon money, that's what the Patreon is for, by the way. The Patreon buys things that companies don't send me. Those $530 high vice swans. I got the edifiers from the company. They want them back. They, no one at Swan gets back to me. I'm like, all right, boom, bought. Now, will those end up in a yard sale? The yard sales on the 1st of the 10th is when I clear out my apartment. Piles and piles and piles and piles and piles of boxes. Can't keep them all. So if you want to buy some of my stuff, Every month I release a video on the first or the second that says, here's the stuff that I don't want in my apartment anymore. And you can, if you're a patron of $5 or greater, you get to bid on all that stuff. You say, um, I give you $30 for that and $28 and 14 cents for that and eight bucks. Yeah, $8. I mean, that's not mine and that's not going in the yard sale, but as an example. And if you're continental United States, I ship for free. If you're an international viewer, I will ship to you no matter where you are. Sri Lanka, India, I've shipped to Australia, Poland, um, no one in South America yet. A couple Mexico, a few Canada. That counts as international. If you're international, uh, the agreement is you pay half shipping. I, I've shipped something that cost $200 to ship, and I lost $100 in that shipping, which made me break under even, like way, like I paid money to review that product afterwards. But that's the way it goes, because that person became a patron, and he paid me my $5, and it'll work out hopefully if he sticks around for a while. Um, that's all I have to say. Thank you for stopping by. Check out the links in the description. Check out the RMF GoFundMe page. We're trying, I'm trying to bring this sort of cheap, amazing, well, that's not cheap. Although, that would still be cheap at RMF. $4,000 subwoofer, get this garbage out of my room. You know, only $25,000 subwoofers at RMF. 
So that, that's actually an idea. I don't think the Genlocks ever, whatever. Help me with that. Support on Patreon if you like this channel. Subscribe, all that other crap. I never tell people to subscribe, so I don't. You'll do that if you want to. You'll like it if you want to. You'll hate it if you want to. You'll send pictures of your hot mom to me via Instagram mm -hmm. if you want to. That's it. Again, wallpaper there. How long is this video? I've been ranting. I really like these speakers. I give a lot of time to things I like. And if you like, well, how, how does Zio say they sound? Holy shit.